Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage with Mike number two. And Mike uh, helped paint the, the tee and it's cured for what, I don't know, a month maybe? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's been a while. So uh, now that we got this, uh, what, what was the reason exactly? What, what the paint cure and harden before? Yeah, you want to let it off gas. Um, if you do your sanding and buffing right after painting, uh, your sand scratches can come back and it can kind of, you know, you have to hit it again. So there's no point in doing it twice. Just wait a little while, let it cure. And when you sand and buff it, it'll stay right where you put it. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're actually sending the tub away to get upholstered here really soon. Uh, so we're doing like a debut of the car at uh, Viva East in Massachusetts in uh, middle of July. Mike's gonna drop the, the date and info right there. And uh, so we're trying to get the car ready. So we're gonna do just a quick, not quick, but we're gonna go over and do the first round of nibbing, buffing, color sanding, all that stuff to get it ready so that the upholstery guy uh, we don't have to do that work around his nice upholstery. So we're going to show you the process. Mike's done this a lot, so I'm going to let him kind of take the lead and give you guys some tech tips, but hopefully there's some little things with correcting uh, the paint and getting it nice and flat that will help you guys. So let's get started. First things first, I like to just go lightly over the entire surface. And the only reason I'm doing this is I like to actually just see where all my dirt nibs are. So I'm not trying to remove anything or take out um, any of the orange peel or do anything too crazy. Um, just identify what issues I have. So if you look down the reflection, you can usually see um, all the dirt nibs with no issues. Um, but sometimes it's pretty tough to see, especially on a black vehicle like this. So I just like to kind of scuff over everything real light. And then they all show up. And what, gr what grit are you using for this first round here? This is 2000 grit. Okay. So you can use 1500. Um, some guys like to start at 1000 even. Um, in my experience, it's not really that great because you're taking off a lot of material. Um, okay. You can start with 1500 if you have severe orange peel or nibs. Um, sometimes I like to do 1500 just in little spots, but the more you use 1500 or any uh, you know rough grits like that, Basically, that just means you have more work with 2,000 and above. So you can make things easier on yourself by just doing a little bit more with the elbow grease with a higher grit. All right, so we should have a couple spots showed up here. We have a couple right there. We're trying to get a close-up, but you can see now what you were saying that it kind of highlights the little dirt nib spots you got to flatten out, which is really... Makes it look worse than it is. <laughs> yeah. But it makes it easy to see, I guess. It's kind of like uh, when I use machinist die when I'm doing hammer and dolly and file work, you can. Yep, especially on a black car like this, you can just, you can see everything. And if you can see it, you can take it out. If you don't know it's there, you might think you're all good. And uh, when it gets out in the sun, you got that ugly spot. See it later. Yeah, so 1500 grit, just these little nibs there used to be nibs right there. So there's a little bit of one right there. And you can see, I'm not really pressing hard. I'm not really doing much, but you don't want to push with your fingers. If you push with your fingers, you can make trenches. Same as sanding before paint when you're sanding the primer. So just make a nice wide spot like that, real light. You don't want to dig in and make the scratches worse than they have to be. <laughs> just a little bit of light spot work like that. Wow and the nibs are pretty much gone. You don't want to take it much farther than that. 2,000 will take, if you do the most of your work with 2,000. Okay, so we can see, I'm gonna try and zoom in here. I'm gonna to point to those spots you were. There were a couple nibs right here. But you, you can still sort of see them real, real yeah, light. Yeah, I can see little dots there. So those you weave in. Yep, so and then. Weave room. Yep, you gotta leave room. That's exactly a good way to put it. You leave room for your 2,000, and I'm gonna hit it with 2,500 also. And then uh, you don't have to worry about taking off too much material. All right, go ahead. So what do you, you got the block? All right, you got so the I got the, the little soft block. I got 2000 grit wrapped around it. So since I've got all my nibs mostly taken care of and now I want to focus on orange peel, um, you want to keep the block nice and flat. You can use it by hand. Um, you just want to take care not to dig any holes, like I said before. So um, as long as you're just scuffing real lightly, it's not going to do anything. The block helps you get everything nice and flat, gets you the mirror finish you're looking for. Just dumped it. Okay. 
You have to have that, uh, that Brita water that's uh, sub-50 <laughs> sub degree Brita water. Yes, nothing but oh, the best. Only the best for the free tea. It went from trash to using <laughs> fresh triple filter. Yeah, Polish spring water. <laughs> 19 year old virgin scooped it from the water <laughs> and, and carried it by plane. Can we get her back here? Yeah. She didn't say it was to her. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just doing a little assuming here. We're going to assume that it was. Right away, you're jumping to the conclusion. You got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess up my dream, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So that block takes out the orange peel? For the most part, yeah. The block pretty much, it doesn't do anything that your hands don't. It's just by hand you can't really keep it flat. Right. So it's basically the same as block sanding uh, filler or right. block sanding primer. You're basically just, Getting you know, knocking down the high spots yeah. and then going down to the lows. So this is still 2,000? This is 2,500. Oh. So moved up to 25 and I'm doing the last bit with 25. So, so the, the 2,500, is that just getting, like what's the purpose of the 2,500 versus 2,000? Like sometimes. So the finer you go, uh, basically just buffing is easier. Okay. So by going out to 2,500 or even above, they do make very, very fine, which for black, it would be useful. Basically, by not taking it that far out, you're just doing a little bit more work with the buffer. Okay. That's pretty much it. And that's a little less controlled, possibly. Is that why? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can you can do some really really fine work um, with some material they make DA paper that is uh, basically just so ultra fine. But I like to just do everything by hand, and 2,500 seems to be enough. Okay, that's a good stopping point. So basically, every time you move up in grit, you're just working out the previous grit's scratches. Yeah. So 2,000 to take out 1,500, and then 2,500 to take out the 2,000, and then what takes out the 2,500 is the compound and the, the buffer. Okay. So the 2,500 is going to bring a little bit of the shine back now? Yep, it's going to be pretty shiny once it's all dried off here. The one thing mm -hmm. also to note is that you really shouldn't be listening to loud music or headphones on when you're doing this because you need to, to hear. You can't always feel. You really need to hear the surface. And if you hear any kind of like a higher pitched scratch, it's actually contaminants between your sandpaper and the surface. So it's all about cleanliness. You can pick up dirt and then by sanding, you're grinding it into the surface. So you really, really have to be careful. All right, next steps, just compound in a wool pad. Um, you can use a foam compounding pad. Um, I think the Norton ones are blue. Um, we are using this uh, Norton wool pad here and uh, 3M rubbing compound. Um, this is my preferred step. Wool is actually more aggressive, which is good for paint correction like this. And it actually buffs cooler than foam. So you can use the foam one and it does work, it's effective, but it actually builds up heat a lot faster. And heat when you're buffing is a bad thing. So with the wool pad, you can actually really hammer it and uh, get out those 2500 grit scratches a lot more quickly. I basically just like to rub it on the surface rather than put it straight on from the bottle. It just helps to avoid some sling. And with a new pad, it actually loads up really, or it doesn't load up very quickly, so. I'll have to apply it again pretty quick.
So a lot of people who are familiar with detailing will notice that again, uh, this is more aggressive. Um, you gotta use a rotary buffer um, using a dual action, something like this. That's for correcting paint uh, defects once you've been driving it around for a while. Um, refinishing is much different. You need to be very aggressive with a wool pad in order to get out those sand scratches. So again, if you're familiar with detailing, it's gonna look like I'm going a little crazy on it. It's because it actually is. So you need to spend a lot of time to get out those sand scratches. So this is what the surface looks like after compounding. So it's a little bit of a haze in it. It's mainly fixed. So all the steps for correction have been done except for polishing. You see these swirl marks in the haze. That'll all come out with the polish and subsequent steps. So the next one I've got is the 3M uh, perfected machine polish and a foam pad. So the only thing I'm doing here is just taking out the scratches that the foam or the uh, wool pad put in and the compound, uh, you know, how it took out the old sand scratches. Well, Sal, trans pieces, I would be happy. So I didn't expect there to be anything crazy. I know you said there's a bunch of you got friends with them. I always run the buffer slower for polish. It's just a more delicate step. So you want to not heat up the material too much and spend longer working it in and taking out the, scratch, the sand scratches. So just run it a little slower. The polishing or the buffing I did at like 1800 RPM, this is about 1200. It's my favorite stuff to spray though. It smells like finished project. <laughs> yeah. Almost like a cleaning product. Yep, it just smells like I'm done doing work now. <laughs> That's the specific spray smell. See like little tiny imperfections and you're gonna be like, it's kind of like seeing behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, there is the scratch and I see this, whatever. Dude, this is way, way, way nicer than what I wanted originally. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these panels, I can't believe how, like, there really isn't that much dirt in the bottom. Yeah, there's really not. I know in some of the, the like- top surface there yeah. is. But that's just the way it works, and that's the whole, like, painting in a barn thing. It's just, top surfaces always get dirty, and that's why, remember how I said I like to do everything hanging up? Yeah. So this is 2,500, coming at an angle so you can see. Check the progress here. So it's, it's sort of dull, but it's smooth, I guess is the way you'd put it. Show the difference between the polished. Yeah, you can really see the scratches better there, or so to speak, scratches.
really weird spot. Yeah. Moon's losing his <laughs> He's not he's not allowed around the shiny car. So what are these? I see there's a couple little like pock marks, if you will, that are after you wet sanded it. What, what are yeah, they? so those are actually imperfections on the surface. So that would be something like micro fish eyes or something else that caused the paint to not, um, it's not a nib that comes outwards, it's kind of a pock mark that's a divot in the clear. So um, on something like this, you just re really want to be careful. You can see we flat sanded the entire panel, but something like here, a lot of people will flat sand those until they go away. We do have enough clear on the surface here, but if you're just gonna sand those until they go away entirely, you're taking off all the clear on the area surrounding yeah. it because you have to work down to the center of that yep. small crater. So when you're doing that, you're just removing all the clear that's on the surface to protect it. So when you go to detail the car in the future or something like that, you have much less material on there. Okay. And so, it's gonna be a wave too, right? Because it's gonna have a- It will, yep. It'll have a low spot basically. Yep. Okay, so after you uh, buff this out, will they, you know, will you still be able to see them or do they kind of like flow back into the paint or? They'll blend in for the most part. Yeah, you will probably be able to see them if you look for them. You know where to look for them, you'll see it. Once the car is outside, you probably won't see them at all. Um, Personally, I would rather see a couple small imperfections like that if I'm staring at a reflection rather than having the risk of burning through the clear. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Cool, yeah, I'm excited to see how it goes from just blending in because uh, I'd be like freaking out here and trying to like <laughs> sand it out and I'd, then I'd be re-clearing the whole panel. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, a lot of times people are scared away from buffing and sanding and buffing their own cars and that's because they've heard the stories about people burning through clear and all of that. So oh, okay. um, that's one of the main ones. So staying away from your edges. Um, you'll notice I didn't get down here in this, uh, this crease. There's not really any dirt nibs or very little orange peel anyway. But if you stay away from those major areas and avoid flat sanding, stuff like that, you're not gonna burn through. Okay, cool, let's see how it turns out. Yeah, it's actually really nice to work with like reflection, but then it's tough to find the nibs again. So that was 2,500? That was 2,000. Oh, 2,000 grit. Yep. Just on the nibs. So 
So what is this? This is 2500. Okay. You hear how it changes? Smooth. Oh, yeah. And it's rougher. That's where you still have orange peel. See, that's how you can tell without having to wipe it all down yet. Because I think a lot of people will probably see it being hazed out and not realize that it's almost buff as it is. Oh yeah, you can see the reflection of the sky and the trees in it. Alright, so it's uh, like 11 o'clock at night. We uh, like it's like we were doing body work again. Same story, different day. <laughs> so we uh, we worked a little bit on it uh, in, in the video as you're watching. It's not all in one day. So we worked a little bit on it uh, Sunday night for a little bit, got one side kind of done. And then we worked on the doors and, and like everything, when you get all these little pieces, it takes a lot longer to do than expected. Uh, but we got everything, what would you call it, like the rough, Buffing, I don't even know what to term it. Yeah, I guess rough. We did some compound and like one session, one pass of uh, polish. A uh, little bit more to do once you get the final assembly yeah. and it's back, you know, in your hands again. And yeah. uh, we'll get it all finessed at that point. But it looks, it, I, I was telling Mike when he was working on this, this is like, even though this isn't like done, I'm like, this is better than I expected. Like I, I didn't plan on having it this nice by any means, but man, it looks freaking awesome. I'm really psyched with this door this door we actually got latching pretty good uh the other side i need to work on the on the getting the adjustment for the catch just a little bit better normal stuff when reassembling but we're kind of running out of time tonight and energy so uh the side the whole car looks really good we even got the dash 
uh, all, all polished up and uh, now we're gonna send it away to upholstery. So later this week, once I get that door latching, we're gonna send it away to upholstery and it'll be gone for probably like three weeks while that's all getting done and uh, we'll keep doing updates on it. So hopefully you guys found this uh, helpful. I know I learned a lot watching Mike do this and some of the other guys that were over were asking questions and Mike was uh, coaching everybody. So we all learned while Mike did it, which was really great. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something too. So thanks guys for watching. We do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe because we're gonna be doing burnouts real soon. Thanks guys, catch you later.